All right, all right. What's going on, party people? This your man Griff. Feeling a lot more refreshed this morning. Uh, man, I was tired this weekend. I really, I'm serious. Um, I spent a lot of this weekend doing videos for the members and stuff. And we're, um, I don't know if you call it a series, but on the as um for the channel members, I'm doing a thing talking about adding value to your notary business and going over some specifics, um, things with them. And, um, yeah, we having a good time with that. That's, that's turning out to be very, very interesting as I'm learning more about the whole word of value and what people deem as adding value to a business. Um, and then you have value and then added value, you know, like this extra thing. So there's value, but then there's another thing called added value. And um, it's real interesting when you start Googling and just searching words and stuff, you it's amazing what you'll find out and it can change the, your perspective on business and just you know what we're doing and all of that good stuff so and all of that but i wanted to share something with everybody about um notarizations these notarial certificates and as we did last friday on the fritter friday we talked about you know notarial certificates especially the corporate ones well i have a closing this morning and it's a person that's with a bank that's signing for a trust, okay? So they're selling a property, and it's for a bank. We'll just say, um, we'll say Bluefin Bank, okay? So Bluefin National Bank um, is has a trust, and they're doing it on behalf of a trust of John Joan and Jane Joan Trust that was established in june of 1995 okay something like that well i noticed as i was going through the notarial certificate and thank you for hitting the like button and sharing i noticed when i was going through the notarial certificate on the acknowledgement it had the foregone instrument was acknowledged before me on this date by and it and it just had bluefin trust for the john joan and jane jones trust um established you know what i said may i was just you know may 1995 but it did not have the name of the person who's signing it so the way the notarial <coughs> excuse me the way the notarial certificate is written as if the actual bank is a sign of meaning i'm notarizing the signature of the bank so who the and we don't notarize the signature of the entity because the bank didn't show me proof of their ID. The bank didn't show me who they were. And I was sitting there looking at it and I was like, mm -mm, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right. So I'm adding a notarial certificate, but what I'm doing is adding in my notarial certificate. And when I get a chance, I'll show y'all how I did it. Um, I'm adding in the person's name. So we'll just say um, Sarah Jones. So I did, you know, so... The foregone instrument was acknowledged before me on such and such date by Sarah Jones of such and such bank for such and such trust dated dot, dot, dot. I had to put the person's name in there because their name was missing. You can't, you're not, because it just says, because who is the person who is in the notarial certificate? It doesn't have the person's name. It has their name up here on the signature line, but it didn't have the name in the actual notarial statement. And the way the notarial statement was written, I couldn't just add it in there. There was no space to add it in there or anything, you know. Um, so I just, so I put out an all-purpose acknowledgement and I put it in there. Actually, I typed it up um, so that everything could fit in there nice and neat. And I'm adding that certificate, you know. So if anybody was to ask me for us, the receivers of the document, I will share with them the reason why, because... The person who signed their name isn't in there. I don't. I'm not notarizing an entity, meaning a business thing, because the bank can't sign. It has to be a person, and that person's name isn't listed in there. So that's something that I had never come across. But here's the thing: you probably say, "Well, how did I figure out that I should do that?" Well, when you understand your notarial laws and understand what a proper notarial certificate looks like and the fact that we 
notarized signatures, not documents, and that a bank or other business is not, which bank is a business, I understand, is not a person whose signature we're notarizing. They're representing the bank, but who signed it? And you have to have that person's name in the notarial certificate. And everywhere else, they had the person's name in there. They just didn't have it in that particular one. So I had to create, you know, I had to use, when you create a notarial certificate, however you do it, that and put that person's name in there in front of the bank's name, you know, saying, you know, Mary Jones of such and such bank for the John Jones and Jane Jones trust established in 1996 or whatever. And I'm good to go. So just wanted to share that with y'all this morning. Tell me your thoughts on it. Um, I'm, this is something that I came across. Nobody's teaching it. Probably take what I said here and start teaching it. Don't pay for it. You get, you heard it here first. Tell your friends, don't pay for that kind of training. You got it right here first. But when you're out there working, you come across these kind of things. When you're out there taking orders, you come across these kind of things and it increases your learning and all of that. So I'm, I mean, I'm excited to see what happens. Hopefully nobody tries to push back on it and all of that good stuff, but we'll see. But I, I have justification as to why I did it and I can articulate why I did it. And this is the part that people are missing in their notorial business is that their ability to articulate why they um, did the notarial certificate the way that they did it. And when you don't understand what a notarial certificate is, you don't understand what your state laws are, when you don't understand the fact that we notarize signatures and not documents, you won't be able to figure that kind of stuff out. But if you have the proper knowledge, you will. And that's what this channel is all about, is making sure you have the proper knowledge of what you're supposed to do in accordance with your state laws so that you can make money consistently by doing the things right. Doesn't matter about how well you market, but if you can't do your job correctly, nobody's going to continue to pay you money. It's that simple. All right. Talk to y'all later. Peace.